amazing day everyone so for this session we will be uh, tackling about therapeutic communication skills particularly the effective communication and purposes of therapeutic communication so at the end of this session um, you'll be able to discuss the different aspects of therapeutic communication uh, demonstrate therapeutic communication skills to clients and other stakeholders uh, in the university or any industry, examine how intercultural differences can affect health communication, and of course, engage oneself in listening to the issues and concerns of the society and propose or give significant service needed. So, um, therapeutic communication uh, is an important concept for you to learn as future health provider in communicating with a client or patient to help both their physical and emotional well-being and can have a long-reaching positive effects on patients. So from the moment you greet them to when they get on consultation table, therapeutic communication can make each step go smoother. So this is your Sir Alfred Corpus, your lecturer. Healthcare professionals have at their fingertips an array of resources undreamed of throughout human history advanced technology, innovative treatment and pharmaceutical options, and exponentially expanding knowledge of the human body and the nature of disease. Yet one of their most effective tools is as old as human civilization itself, communication, the healing human relationship between patient and provider. The great founder of modern medicine, Dr. William Osler, said it long ago, listen to your patient. He is telling you the diagnosis. Every healthcare interaction begins with the exchange of information, and the quality of that exchange is critical to every aspect of the diagnosis, treatment, and eventual outcome. Does the provider have enough and the right information to make an accurate diagnosis? Does the patient feel as if he or she is being taken seriously and that the provider cares? Is there an ongoing sense of trust, respect, and openness on both sides throughout the diagnosis and treatment process? And is there effective communication across the entire healthcare team? Positive answers to these questions matter greatly, not only for the individual patients and healthcare professionals, but for the future of healthcare itself. Research clearly points to the benefits of improved patient-provider communication. More accurate diagnosis, fewer errors, and reduced malpractice risks. Better patient adherence to treatment. Reduced expenditures. Lower hospital readmission rates. Increased satisfaction and improved experiences for patients and providers. In other words, better healthcare outcomes all around. Every patient who walks into a healthcare setting has a story to tell and a desire to feel cared for and cared about. The quality of the care they receive and their satisfaction with that care will depend largely on the willingness and ability of healthcare professionals to listen and to understand that story. So there we go. So why communication is important uh, for you as student or as future health provider? And as we all know, or based on the short video that you have just watched, um, therapeutic communication is a basic tool uh, used to uh, construct the practitioner-client relationship. And it is the major intervention modality of health providers. So to become an effective communicator, so you uh, must be aware of the client's nonverbal as well as the verbal messages and being able to focus on both the content and the context of the message enables uh, the provider to assist clients to speak openly about their feelings. So therapeutic communication, effective communication. So before we deal more into this one, so let me first define what does therapeutic meant by. So when we say therapeutic, uh, it means or it means um, healing. It also means uh, curative. And of course, it also means uh, restorative. 
Alright, so therefore, therapeutic is the attempt to cure, improve, mitigate, treat, and or prevent such diseases and or the conditions in the humans. Now, what about communication? What does communication meant by? So, by definition, communication is the imparting or exchange of information. It is also the act of conveying meanings from one entity or group to another through the use of mutual understood signs, um, symbols, or semiotic rules. So, when we say semiotic, it is the gestures or images. So, therefore, um, therapeutic communication is defined as uh, the face-to-face -face process of interacting that focuses on advancing the physical and emotional well-being of a patient. And also, therapeutic communication is an interpersonal interaction between the provider and the client during which the provider focuses on the client's specific needs to promote an effective exchange of information. And with therapeutic communication techniques, it also helps the provider understand and empathize with the client's experience. So now, what does effective communication mean by? So when we say effective communication, it is defined as a communication between two or more persons in which the intended message is first properly um, encoded and what else? Uh, delivered through appropriate channel. Next is uh, received, then properly decoded and understood by the recipient. So therefore, when we say therapeutic communication, um, it, it's a communication to be effective when all the parties, which is the sender and the receiver in the communication, assign similar meanings to the message and listen carefully to what all have been said and make the sender feel heard and understood. Alright, so communication in healthcare. So the aim of every healthcare profession, professional is to provide care and evidence-based unconditionally patient-centered and shared collaborative partnership with the patient. So what does evidence-based mean meant by? So evidence-based in terms of communication in healthcare means integrating um, individual clinical expertise with the best available external clinical evidence from systematic examination. Right? Now, what does collaborative partnership mean? Meant, means by or meant by so when we say collaborative partnership in terms of communication in healthcare it is an effective communication or cooperatively working together sharing uh, responsibility for problem solving and making decisions to formulate and carry out plans for patient care so next so effective communication has been shown to develop trust between patient and clinician and produces better outcome. So what does trust between patient and clinician uh, meant? So how do we build trust with uh, patients? So there are three ways to build rapport uh, with patients uh, in order to build trust. So first is of course communicate often and well. Effective communication is a foundation on which you can establish uh, trust with your patient. So second is express, of course, empathy. So you need to be able to empathize with your patient without being emotionally overwhelmed yourself. And lastly, of course, project calmness. All right, so um, communication in healthcare focuses on the client's specific needs and used to first establish the therapeutic relationship. So how do we establish a therapeutic relationship with the patients. Of course, the first thing that um, we need to do or you need to do in the future is, of course, introduce yourself to your patient or to your client and um, tell who you are, most likely your name, while talking with them. And of course, a handshake at your initial meeting is often a good way to quickly establish trust and respect. Second is make sure your patient has a privacy when you done um when you provide care, for example, uh, you're going to clean uh, a wound wherein the location of the wound is near to the private area. Of course, we need to prov provide privacy by um, providing drip or uh, closing the curtain so that um, no one can uh, see uh, the private area of the client or patient. 
Then third is active listening to your patient. So when we actively listening to our patient, of course, we need to maintain eye contact, um, open posture, do not cross your legs or cross your, your arm because does, that does not demonstrate an active listening. And of course, a little bit lean forward, which uh, demonstrate uh, interest that you are listening to them. And lastly, so of course, um, maintain professional boundaries. Okay? Next, identify the client's most important concern. So how uh, would you determine the support needs of clients? Of course, uh, we need to interview the client or the caregiver or your colleagues. And of course, daily observation of the activities. So by just observing the activities or the things that the patient or the client is uh, doing, we can already um, see what are the concerns of the client or the patient. Third, assess the client's perception. So when we say patient's perception of care quality refers uh, to patient's view of services received and the results of the treatment and are monitored to assess the delivery and quality of healthcare. So why is patient perception important? So um, patient's perception is important because it enables a more thorough report and clarifies patient condition. And also, uh, patients become uh, a part of the care team and can add important information. Fourth, facilitate the client's expression of emotion. So an ability to identify the ways in which clients manage and process their emotions, including the ability to recognize when clients are finding it uh, difficult to assess. And another one, an ability to help clients experience feelings which may be out of current awareness. So example, first, helping clients focus on their attention inwards in order to become more aware of their feelings. Second, helping clients find ways of describing emotions which seem difficult to assess. And another example, by listening empathically for feelings that are implicit, not yet fully in awareness. Right? Next one is teach the client and family necessary self-care um, self skills. So through communication, so changing the self-care behavior of patients is relevant not only for preventing future health problems such as heart disease or any ailments or diseases, but also mediating the course of long-term conditions. Next, recognize the client's needs. So through communicating, as a health professional, you need to identify whether a client's uh, symptomology is considered normal, abnormal, uh, requiring intervention, or a critical finding that requires uh, prompt interventions. For example, with the normal uh, respiratory rate. With your age, so the normal respiratory rate for teenagers to adult is around 12 to 20 cycles per minute so lower than 12 that is already hypoventilation so therefore there's a need already of um, intervention so this is abnormal or if ever um, it is more than 20 it is really um, beyond 20 let's say about 30 that is already hyperventilation so that is abnormal also so uh, it needs um, intervention if ever um, you you uh, come across um, vital signs such this one. Okay. Next, uh, implement interventions designed to address the client's needs. So through uh, communication and involvement of patients in interventions, so evidence tells that supporting patients to be actively involved in their own health care treatment and support can improve outcomes and experience for patients and potentially. Uh, yield efficiency savings for the system through more um, personalized commissioning and supporting people to stay well, uh, manage their own conditions better. And lastly, uh, guide the client towards satisfactory and acceptable uh, solutions. So through communication, guiding client towards satisfactory and acceptable solutions is an important and commonly used indicator for measuring the quality in healthcare. So patient satisfaction um, affects clinical outcomes, um, patient retention, 
um, medical malpractice claims. So it affects the timely, um, efficient, and patient-centered delivery of quality health care. So we have here essential components of therapeutic communication. So first here is confidentiality. So when we say confidentiality, it is respecting the client's right to keep private any information about this, his or her condition. So therefore, if ever the patient um, talks to you and asks a favor that um, he or she don't want, uh, someone will know about his condition, please respect them. Um, have a sense of confidentiality and we should not divulge such information or might as well we should not share um, confidential or private information to other health providers who, who are not part of taking care of that person or that patient. Next is self-disclosure. So when we say self-disclosure is revealing personal information about oneself to uh, clients such as uh, biographical information and personal ideas, thoughts, and feelings. So for example, if it's your first time to meet the patient or whenever you go to your patient, um, please greet them, tell them who you are, what's the purpose, why you are there for in order to build trust. And lastly, privacy and respect for boundaries. So promoting privacy. So first, is of course do not talk uh, loud just talk uh, softly in such the way um, uh, they can hear you and nobody else can hear what uh, you are conversing with the patient or the family members then drawing curtain between roommates for example uh, you are explaining such a procedure so if you are in a general ward where um, there are other patients staying in the room so you can provide privacy by closing the curtain so that whatever information you will be imparting to the patient or to the family members uh, it's just within uh, the patient and the significant other and of course turning on uh, tv to muffle the conversations for, uh, just to divert um, for example um, you are five in the room uh, the patient's room there are five patients so to divert the attentions of other patients you can turn on the television so that the four other patients and the family members of those four other patients will uh, watch the television and they will not focus on whatever you are imparting information to the patient concerned okay so variables that influence communication. So many factors in clients' background influence the communication process and affect the outcome of each provider-client interaction. So first is culture. So when we say culture, uh, it differs from one group to another and these differences can affect the level of trust and openness in communication that one can achieve with people of other cultures. So therefore, uh, the cultural difference should be properly understood in order to ensure the effective communication. So in, um, in the future, guys, um, you will be dealing with different cultures. So please respect. Do not judge uh, their belief. Next is values, the beliefs and rules people lived by. So when we say values, these are the attitudes and values that influence effective communication, both positively and negatively. So when the attitude of the patient is positive um, there are or there is an empathy that exists between this conversing um, each side and it will strive to fully understand what the other is saying in order to provide the best possible uh, response okay next is social status so when we say social status uh, providers communicative style is influenced by uh, the way the provider communicate Patients from higher social classes communicate more actively and show more if, um, effective expressiveness. So eliciting more information from their provider. When a patient from lower social classes are often disadvantaged because of the provider's um, misperception of their desire and need for information and their ability to take part in the care process. This is very true, uh, guys, for the social status. Um, most of the patients who are from the higher class really talks a lot, ask a lot. Unlike with those who are not unprivileged, they don't talk, ask that much. So as a, 
uh, provider, you already um, take the initiative, uh, feel free that you are there to uh, help and provide such information. Next is emotional state. So these are the feelings that affect patterns of communication. So feelings play a big role in communication. So if you are emotionally aware, you will be um, communicating better. So you will notice the emotions of other people and how the way they are feeling influences the way they communicate. So you will also better understand what others are communicating to you and why. And lastly is spiritual orientation. So sometimes uh, people may feel uncomfortable communicating with people from other religions because of assumptions that about others' belief and opinions. So one main communication barrier stemming from religion is the individual's lack of knowledge or information about other religions and belief systems. So as you go along in your career, you need to understand uh, the orientation, the religions of other people, um, such as uh, Islams or Muslims, and they are not really eating into pork. So if you saw a patient's uh, religion who is an Islam or Muslim, and you saw their diet is that or diet as tolerated when we say diet as tolerated they can eat whatever they want but of course taking into consideration their religion which is islam or muslim so take note of their except pork right another one is the jehovah witnesses and as we all know for the jehovah witnesses uh they are not really accepting blood transfusions so if ever they will um do not agree such procedure we need to respect we can explain the consequences but we should not force them to really uh, do such procedure, okay? So, what is patient-centered communication? So, patient-centered communication involves reaching a common ground about the illness, its treatment, and the roles that the clinician and the patient will assume. So, when we say patient-centered care as respecting and responding to patients' wants, um, needs, preferences so that the patients can make choices in their care that best fit their individual circumstances. So in other words, uh, patient-centered communication recognizes the individual as a person and responds to the individual's feelings, preferences, and needs. Um, another one, uh, patient-centered uh, should begin with the introduction of all persons uh, present at the visit. So this includes the physician, the patient and anyone else in the room uh, specifying their relationship to the patient. So non-urgent situation, positive remarks about non-medical issues such as the weather, uh, generalities about the day or non-specific encouraging observation can build rapport. Um, an open-ended question, how can I help you today? So brings focus uh, to the purpose of the visit or enabling the patient to discuss anything relevant to their health and emphasize the uh, provider's role as a helper. So it is the preferred initial statement for initial and follow-up visits. So here you go. So here's a diagram of a patient-centered communication. So of course, we need to ensure uh, comfort, that they are comfortable whenever we are communicating with them. Uh, do not use such highfalutin or medical terminologies because as we all know, uh, medical terminologies will only be understood if the person you are talking with is also medical inclined. Other than that, we need to translate in such a way they can understand whatever we are um, telling to them. Then consider patient motiv motivation and readiness. So we need to provide a word of encouragement for them to be motivated to boost their confidence and un acknowledge and understand the patient as an individual. So all, all of us are different, so we need to uh, treat them um, equally or differently and we need to make some adjustments and provide useful information so whatever uh, necessary information that is needed only to the patient please do so and of course facilitate a shared decision making so in making uh, decisions include also the patient which increases uh, outcomes and satisfaction so uh, define the scale and scope of the condition 
Um, with this first one, of course, we need to explain whatever is happening to the patient or to the client. And of course, generalize and evaluate alternative solutions. So already we come up already of solutions and also uh, include the patient in making solutions. Then decision, decide on mutually acceptable solutions. So you collaborate with the patient, with other health providers, and it should be acceptable to all. And of course, if it's already acceptable to all, we already uh, implement uh, the solution. And if we implement already the solution, we now evaluate if the solutions that we provided are effective. And if it's effective or not effective, we need to provide feedback services um, over time. Okay. <clears throat> so what are the effects of communication? I'll never forget the day that my four-year-old son, Logan, almost died in my arms in Royal University Hospital. We were sitting on his hospital bed when he let out a scream. And I knew that he shouldn't be screaming because he shouldn't have been in any pain. A bag of potassium that was a concentrated, heavy concentration bag um, was hung instead of a diluted bag. As a pharmacist, I know that when the concentration of potassium is too high, that it can burn. So I knew when I looked behind me and saw potassium hanging, that the concentration Logan had been given was too high for him, and as a result could have killed him. I immediately locked his IV, and I started to cry and shake with all the chaos going on around us. I went over to the bedside and saw that she clearly was upset about something. And he looked right at me and he said, I have no idea what you're talking about, but I trust you and I know that you know there's something wrong. I'm here to help. Let's figure this out. We rolled Logan down to the, the OR rate waiting room where we met up with the anesthetist. And come to find out, he didn't even know that Logan had a kidney condition. He wouldn't have required us to, to increase his, the potassium if, if he had known that in advance. I firmly believe that everybody that day was working with my son's best intentions. I work in the system myself um, and I saw errors. I've been involved in errors before, but the way Saskatoon Health Region handled this error has been incredible to watch. Their openness to understand that there are safety defects in the system and their openness to work with me and to try to fix them have been unlike anything I've experienced in my own healthcare career to this point. The most important thing that I learned from this, this whole experience was that first of all, we as healthcare providers need to talk to each other. We need to be able to listen to the families. If we are in a situation where we're not sure what's going on and we're not comfortable with the situation, we can't be scared to just push the stop button and figure out together what's really gone wrong. Safer Every Day is a 90-day initiative where we are focused on improving safety for patients and our staff. One of the areas of focus is on team communication. We're really working on how to help teams communicate, including the patient and family, in a way that keeps everyone safe. The other area we're really focused on is how do we support both the patient, family, the staff, and the physicians who are involved in events like Logan's, so that they feel supported um, after the event, that we all learn from the event, and that we work together to put in initiatives or improvements that make our care safer every day. I was devastated when I heard Logan's story, but I also know that unless we figure out how to work differently and build safer systems, that what happened to Logan could happen again. All right, so there you go. So as what you have wa just watched, team communication is very vital to um, prevent any such errors. And of course, making sure what is really the condition of the patient because we can also already determine um, if, we, we, if we really need to provide such medications as what stated there um, the, the child has a kidney problem which is um, the potassium is really um, normal for 
um, persons who have kidney problems but there at some point they may um, miss or did not uh, see uh, the underlying condition of the, the patient they still um, um, provided uh, potassium and the potassium is uh, they delivered intravenously is concentrated and mind you guys for potassium it's it's really uh, a painful medication if it's given um, without any dilution when we say dilution uh, there's no mixture of um, distilled or uh, fluids there so it can burn the vein of the uh, patient if it's not diluted with uh, sterile water all right so health outcomes so therefore patients perception of the quality of health care they receive are highly dependent on the quality of their interactions with uh, their health care clinician and the team so basically on the video the second video that you just watched so basically the mother is just dependent on whatever um, the providers is being pro um, um, they are providing uh, the whatever interventions that they are doing to their child luckily the mother is also a health provider so she knew um, what is the cause of um, the pain of her child uh, the connection and the patient feels with his or her clinician can ultimately improve the health and mediate through participation in the care, adherence to treatment, and patient self-management. As, as what you watched earlier, um, um, it's already uh, a team collaboration, team communication, so it's not just limited to the health providers, but also the family who is in um, part of the treatment that they're doing. So patients may not understand or remember what they were told whilst others actively decide not to follow advice and commonly do not uh, tell to their doctor. So let me uh, reiterate or emphasize this one. So there are some, especially for those unprivileged um, clients or patients wherein uh, they are not really able to grasp um, your, the information that you're imparting them. So as a provider, we need to make sure that everything is clear. So how do we do that one? Uh, we can um, ask the patient or the significant others to repeat what we have just said just to make sure that they understood our instruction. Or might as well, if you know, the, if you know uh, their dialect, you can translate in order for, you to, for them to understand a better or let's say for example for geriat uh, geriatric patients so when we say geriatric patients these are the old individuals senior citizen and as we all know for senior citizens or old people they already tend to forgot so <clears throat> so what we can do so we can write down uh, instructions but make sure in writing down it should be uh, readable for them okay next is errors in use of medications are also a common problem which risk patient safety. So research and consultation show clinician, clinicians rarely check patients' understanding on their views and doubts. So as uh, here, let me give an example. When I was working at a community, um, there was an incident wherein uh, the patient um, uh, took or uh, a medication um, too much or overdose. Uh, because of what he understood is that um, three tablets three times a day where in fact it should be three tablet uh, three tablets in the morning once only but the patient did is that um, the patient uh, uh, took the medicine uh, three tablets three times a day so there is already an overdose so luckily uh, we're able to correct the mistakes and nothing bad happens to the patient. So we need to make sure that they fully understand all our um, instruction pertaining to medications. As what I've mentioned earlier, if it's possible for, for you to translate, um, to repeat, to ask them a favor to repeat what you have just mentioned in order to make sure everything is clear to them. So patient satisfaction, satisfaction is largely a result of patients knowing they are uh, getting the best appropriate biomedical health care. Of course, we need, um, if we put ourselves into the shoe of the patient, uh, we also want 
that we are being taken care. Next is being treat, treated humanely as individual and not as an items on the conveyor belt. So make sure to treat um, everyone equally, okay, regardless of their race, their religion, their beliefs. So communication in healthcare, so ethics and communication, so satisfaction affects psychological well-being and adherence to treatment, both of which have a knock on the effect on clinical outcomes, and it also reduces patient complaints and litigation. So basically, if the patient is satisfied, of course, uh, it will reduce uh, complaints from the patient. Then failure in communication of information about illness and treatment are the most frequent source of patient uh, dissatisfactions of course um, for here um, we need to communicate uh, everything as clearly as possible in order for the patient not to be um, dissatisfied and patients felt deserted and devalued by their clinician and thought the information to aid their understanding was delivered poorly as what i've mentioned if it's possible for you to translate um, the instruction in such a way they can understood uh, what you want to uh, share to them okay so barriers and difficulties for clinician so listens to understand the patient so here um, let me give an example I already experienced this one as a provider wherein I have a hard time in listening to or understanding the patient because when I was working at a public uh, hospital, the patient can only speak uh, Ibanag and I cannot really understand uh, what he is saying. So what I did, of course, is I asked assistance from my colleague to help me out understand what uh, does the patient is uh, telling to me. Okay? Then the tone of voice. So here, we need to... Um, control our tone of voice not too soft not too loud if it's too loud uh, it will the interpretation will be we are shouting we are angry if it's too soft um, they might not understand what we are telling to them and of course elicit all patients health concerns so whatever um, their complaints whatever their concerns we need to take note of that and for the patient is comfortability of asking questions so there are some uh, patients that they are shy to ask questions so it's already our initiative to um, ask them and um, to um, be with them or show them that um, our helping hands is there to provide um, ourselves in, in providing interventions or advices and feel sufficient time is spent with the clinician so as much as possible we need to um, see them every now and then but if ever you are handling soon so much patient uh, try to um, manage your time as what i did before um, when i was a pediatric nurse i am handling at least uh, 40 patients i already tried handling 40 patients so what i did is time management uh, making sure that I can um, or everybody I will able to uh, see them and uh, provide all the necessary interventions so communications factors which improve adherence to clinical advice so oriented patients so for example we need to step by step uh, tell them what needs to be done first and second and so forth and so on then uh, use facilitative comments this is to make sure that we are listening to them just simply uh -huh, i see okay po something like that then of course uh, active listening which i mentioned earlier um, earlier then check understanding and ask patients their opinions and of course sense of humor and laughter appropriately so again take note appropriately uh, it depends upon the situation of the patient if the patient's condition is have a high blood pressure or um, seizure uh, patients of course we need to avoid a sense of humor and laughter because those kind of conditions uh, it needs a, a quiet environment it might trigger um, their condition so therapeutic communication purposes so it is an interactive process that occurs between the patient 
and the professionals. So focuses on the patient's problem. So we have patient-centered, okay? So establishes um, establishment of trust as the foundation is very important in the provider-patient relationship. So we have here principles, genuineness. So clinicians must display sincerity, interest using consistent words and actions. So but not just words or action um, in providing sin sincerity also our body language okay so this promotes openness self-acceptance and uh, personal freedom of the patient next is respect of course so as a clinician we must have an unconditional positive regard for the patient so we should not uh, judge if ever they will uh, provide um, alternatives or any suggestions we need to respect that one and if ever their suggestion is not acceptable we need to respond them in uh, a good way that they will not be hurt then honesty of course so a consistent and open and frank approach promotes authenticity in clinician patient relationship so makes the patient trust the uh, clinician for example you don't know the answer of the client's uh, question so be honest uh, tell them that you don't know but uh, you will look for uh, look for someone who can better assist and you will uh, go back to them to answer their question something like that then concreteness so clinicians should use clear specific and concrete language rather than abstractions as what i've mentioned in communicating with your patient we, we need to use um, layman's term not medical terminologies it's okay to use medical terminologies if you are talking with um, medical providers as well but if you're talking to uh, patients or family members we, we should or we need to translate in such a way they will understand um, whatever uh, word we are saying to them then assistance so clinician must exhibit a willing commitment and will stay with the patient so by staying with the patient and the clinician have something of value to offer the patients of course as a health provider this is always uh, the thing that we need to do is to provide uh, assistance to our patients. So if ever they need to um, need to walk or they need to sit, uh, we need to show our open hands to help them out. Then protection. So patients must feel safe from threat and confrontations. For example, um, confidentiality information. So we need to protect that by not uh, telling uh, to others or making chismes or divul dal uh, divulging those informations who are not part of the healthcare team. So permission. So patients must feel free to explore new ways on dealing with past problems in order to build autonomy. So patients learning to try alternative behaviors in se is central to eliminating the patient's uh, problem. For example, if they encountered already the same situation, um, if it worked uh, with them, we can also suggest that kind of uh, intervention. So we have goals. Some of these goals of therapeutic communications, I have discussed this one on the communication in healthcare, um, wherein it focuses on the client's specific needs. So first is identifying the most important client concern uh, at the moment. So here again, client-centered goal. Um, expressing the emotion by facilitating the expression of emotions. Uh, assess the client's perception of the problem as it unfolds. So includes detailed action such as the behaviors and messages of the people involved and the client's thoughts and feelings about the situation, others, and self. Teach the client and family necessary um, self-care skills as what i've mentioned by teaching them a uh, self-care skills if ever they will go home already they know already what to do yet of course we need to recognize the client's needs and implement interventions um, designed to address the client's needs so whatever the needs we need to uh, provide intervention that is really necessary um, or actual uh, need of the patient then guide the client toward identifying a plan of action to satisfy and socially acceptable resolutions. Of course, in everything that we do, in every interventions that you will do to your patient or client, it should be acceptable. Okay? So there you go. So just to sum up, so effective provider-patient communication has been shown to positively influence um, health outcomes by increasing patient satisfaction, leading to greater patient 
um, understanding of health problems and treatments available, contributing to better adherence to treatment plans, and providing support and reassurance to patients. So the personalized health care model encourages collaboration among health providers and patients in order to create shared health goals and the cultivation of health plan to address identified problems. So there you go. So that's for the effective communication and purposes of therapeutic communication. So thank you so much for listening with our session for this day.